Hi, I'm Shen, Global Head of Product here at HTC with our latest all-in-one headset, Vive Focus Vision. Today, I'll be tearing it down and going through some of the new designs and features that we've added. Vive Focus Vision takes a lot of inspiration from Vive Focus 3, which became one of the most popular enterprise devices across the world. Any experience which needed high quality visuals, precise tracking, and flexibility, organizations chose Vive Focus 3. So you'll see it in hospitals and schools, in factories and professional training environments, and every major location-based experience, whether that's for gaming or culture. And Vive Focus 3 was so good, it even became the first VR headset to work properly in microgravity on the International Space Station. So let's take a look inside at the improvements we've brought to Vive Focus Vision. Before I start, I have to warn you that this is not a repair guide. And you definitely shouldn't try this yourself, as it may invalidate your warranty and also impact performance. Every headset sensor is precisely calibrated down to the sub-pixel level, and there's no way to replicate that precision by hand. Okay, let's dive in. We'll start by disassembling our rigid head strap cradle. First, let's take off these detachable gaskets at the front and the back. They're magnetic, so it's quick and easy to swap them out. The polyurethane surface is soft, comfortable, and easily cleanable. Each headset comes with one of these spaces to let you adjust the headset comfort to suit your needs. For example, if you need more space for your glasses. Let's also remove this wide top strap. This helps us spread out the weight balance for optimal comfort. Next, we'll take out this removable battery. This battery lasts up to two hours and is now hot swappable. It means you can remove it and place in a freshly charged one to continue your play session without the headset losing power. I'll show you more about this later. This is as far as we'll go with the battery for safety reasons. Lithium ion batteries are dangerous if mishandled. Now that everything is removed from the head strap, let's start really disassembling the head strap. Vifocus Vision's predecessor, Vifocus 3, was heavily used in environments with what could be considered high amounts of abuse, such as in arcades where headsets can be used hundreds of times a day and often get thrown around and onto the ground. We analyzed a lot of those headsets, and while the results did indicate gamer rage is a skill issue, we did decide to add reinforcements into our design, such as the metal hook that holds the strap, and some structural reinforcements on the flexible parts of the rear side that goes into the ratcheting mechanism, and added reinforcements to the rotating pivot. The new cradle mechanism is mechanically backwards compatible with Vive Focus 3, and we will be making this upgraded version available as an option for replacement through our service processes in specific regions. Detaching the audio and power cables, then remove the final screws here at the joint we can detach the head strap from the front of the headset completely. We designed these custom speakers for a really immersive soundstage in an open design. It's able to give great clarity and the open design is able to reduce sound leakage with destructive interference. Let's move to the headset. Here, we see our dual element lenses that enable up to 120 degree field of view, surrounded by eye tracking LEDs, and an eye tracking camera on the side. These are bound to an optical tube assembly, which we'll get to later. In the middle is a proximity sensor, and on the left is a micro SD card slot for up to two terabytes of storage expansion. More than enough for all the content and media you'd want to load onto it. We'll need to remove a few more screws here to start tearing down the headset further. Using screws has a lot of advantages versus using glue. It helps with the overall build quality and repairability. I think all the dents in the walls made by the original Vive controllers around the world can attest to our standards for build quality. Moving to the front of the headset, 
you can see the two new high-res stereo pass-through cameras with depth sensing beneath it. In the middle is an infrared floodlight hidden beneath, which helps with better hand tracking in tricky lighting conditions. Around the corners are four tracking cameras that track both the headset and the controllers. With the screws on the other side removed, we can remove the front visor of the headset, revealing all of the internals. The gray piece underneath is a magnesium alloy frame, keeping everything solid but lightweight. At the front, you see the camera modules, depth sensing, and infrared floodlight that was hidden before. It's able to make it through the special infrared transparent material we designed. Disconnecting a few ribbon cables and screws will allow us to remove this assembly. This magnesium alloy frame is structurally strong and helps maintain those super precise calibrations I mentioned earlier. On the other side is our newly designed fan. It is bigger, able to generate a lot more airflow, multiple times that of Vifocus 3, and higher static pressure, which is to do with the ability for air to move while overcoming resistances, such as internal direction changes or obstructions it has to flow around. Combined with a stealthy 25% increase of air intake areas around the headset, including those around the new visor area, we're able to drastically increase cooling performance while simultaneously reducing fan noise. Looking back at the main motherboard, you will see the new copper vapor chamber. Vapor chambers are quite cool in a nerdy way. They are fantastic at moving heat by leveraging the thermodynamics of evaporating a liquid into a gas to immediately remove heat on one side. Then the gas condenses on the cooler side, causing it to heat up, where the cooling system is able to transfer it away. This new cooling system was needed to cool down some of the new components we added, which I'll go into. Our team has always been able to squeeze every bit of performance out of our chipsets with our thermal designs. Removing the vapor chamber and thermal paste reveals the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 chipset with an upgraded 12 gigabytes of LPDDR5 memory on top. And to see what's beside it, we'll need to look beneath this graphite sheet placed around it to cool the surrounding components. Next to the chipset is a 128 gigabyte high performance NAND flash storage. Down here is our image signal processing chip for eye tracking. It's able to assist in the processing of eye tracking data so we can leave more processing resources on the main chipset available for running content. Nearby is the bridge IC and electronics we added to enable PC VR via DisplayPort signal through the USB-C connector on the side. So you can have PC VR experiences that are visually lossless with super low latency. Our implementation using a bridge also allows the headset to connect directly to the GPU to further reduce latency and enables support for HDCP protection. To enable PC VR DisplayPort mode, you will need our Vive Wired Streaming Kit, which includes a 5-meter Vive Wired Streaming Cable and a Vive Wired Streaming Converter. This new cable supports USB 3.2 Gen 2 and is considered a full-feature cable. It means we engineered it specifically with all the connectors it needs to reliably carry USB, DisplayPort signal, and power with optimal signal integrity. This converter was also engineered to aggregate those three protocols into a single USB-C port for the cable. On the other side, you'll find two power ports. You can use either the one included with your Vifocus Vision or the 30 watt USB PD adapter we included with the converter. You only need to use one of them and we leave that flexibility up to you. Next to it, are two cables equipped with USB-A and full-sized DisplayPort connectors for you to plug into your PC. Remember to plug the DisplayPort into your dedicated graphics card and not the one to your CPU's integrator. We also included mini DisplayPort and USB-C to DisplayPort adapters for laptop users because we wanted to make sure that this pack included everything you needed to use upon arrival. Let's continue to tear down by removing these connectors on the sides. These top ones are for the tracking cameras. The middle one actually houses two connectors. The top one for displays and the bottom ones for the eye tracking system. And the ones below connect to the micro SD card slot and system button, the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and of course the USB-C port 
that supports a DisplayPort input signal. There's also a USB-C port at the bottom of the motherboard here for an optional facial tracker accessory. We also need to go around the sides and remove the connectors to our dual microphones, volume keys, various antennas, proximity sensor, and more. It will allow us to remove the main motherboard and look underneath. Beneath the chipset is a lot of power delivery circuitry for system stability and performance. Over here is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth radio, with support for super high speed and low congestion 6GHz Wi-Fi 6E, which is perfect for wireless PC streaming for those who want to be completely untethered with outstanding visuals. In my totally unbiased opinion, it's the best Wi-Fi streaming solution. Over on the main structural frame, you'll see a small battery. This is what enables the hot swapping of the main battery. It's able to sustain the headset in a suspended state for up to 20 minutes. Plenty of time for you to swap in a fresh charged battery. We felt this was especially important if you are playing standalone content or streaming PC content wirelessly. This here is a motor. Let's remove this and take a look. This gear goes into the IPD adjustment mechanism inside. IPD, or interpupillary distance, is the distance between your pupils, which is different for everyone. With the integrated eye tracking, Bifocus Vision is able to detect your eye position and automatically adjust the IPD accordingly with this motor. Really great for when you're showing VR to new people for the first time, and a dream for scenarios where there's high user turnover, like training or location-based entertainment venues. In the middle is also a part of the auto IPD mechanism. This connects to a digital sensor that will allow the system to detect the actual distance between the lenses. Now we just need to remove the main magnesium alloy frame from the outer headset chassis. Next, we'll also remove four tracking cameras around the sides that are screwed into place. Now that we've removed the chassis, we can move on to the last part of the teardown. We just need to surgically remove the stabilizing rods for the optical tubes to slide on and free them from the main frame. The lenses and eye tracking components are bonded to the main tube, so I won't remove them, as I do want to reassemble this headset and use it in the future. But I'll remove the super high resolution dual 2.5K displays. They run at 90 Hz normally, but are capable of running at 120 Hz and will be enabling 120 Hz for PC VR later this year. They give you a highly detailed, super smooth and immersive visual experience. And of course, at the front are our dual element lenses that allow up to 120 degree field of view. And that's Vifocus Vision, torn down into its individual components. Outstanding PC VR with its visually lossless and low latency display board streaming system. Truly an amazing gaming experience and great for enterprises with the best only game better. We're really excited to see what you think. We'll be bundling the Vive Wide streaming kit for DisplayPort mode support for free for buyers during our launch window. To find out more, go to vive.com slash vivefocusvision, which we've linked down below. Ha, ha, ha.